wow, this is the life that I am living. I can't believe that I am now living the life that I manifested. Welcome to Small Girl Big Talk, where we talk about all the big stuff in adulthood like self-identity, relationships, money, career, health, and all the other important things that you care about. I'm your host, Wendy, and my hope for this podcast is for it to bring comfort and help you to feel a little bit less alone in your adulthood journey. I am currently in a season of expansion, of abundance. And I'm coming from a place as someone who was physically unwell for the last two weeks, having to deal with diarrhea and vomiting. But even so, I remember waking up this morning thinking to myself, wow, this is the life that I am living I am feeling so highly energetic. I am feeling so blessed. I am feeling so content. I can't believe that I am now living the life that I manifested. And that is why this week, I want to talk to you all about entering your rich girl era. Or if you are a guy listening to this, it would be your rich boy era. I want to talk about living a rich life, living an abundant life, specifically on practicing an abundance mindset when it comes to approaching your life and your finances. And the reason why I want to talk about this, it's also because I know that currently, economically, we are going through a recession. I know for a fact that a lot of my friends who are in the tech industry are going through the fear of being laid off. And I also know that in the industry that I'm working in, in e-commerce, in the online education industry, you know, ad spend is more and more expensive. And there are a lot of re-strategizing that needs to be done in order to keep your profits as high, to keep your revenue as high. I know a lot of industries are actually struggling. But having said that, I also observed for myself and also the close ones around me. I'm talking about Kevin. I'm talking about other friends that are around me. I do also realize that we are all still somehow living in an abundance. I know that money is flowing into our lives. And that's why I want to talk about this, not in a way that I'm being insensitive, that not everyone is going through a good season in their lives, but it's for the exact reason. I know that I'm going through something is good and I know that not everyone is going through that and that's why I need to talk about it in hopes that whatever that I've observed or learned in my financial journey will be able to help you to gain the abundance as well. So let's then get started by talking about how does living your rich girl era look like? Okay, I want to first start off by emphasizing that when I'm talking about living a rich life, I'm not talking about having seven figure in your bank right now. I'm not talking about buying luxury bags, luxury car kind of richness. I mean, that's the dream, you know, to be able to have that much money that you don't need to worry about anything. But what I want to talk about is living a rich life that gives you that security, knowing that you have enough to live the life of your dreams, where you can actually do things that you are passionate about, where you can actually spend a little bit extra to give your loved ones the things that they, you know they want, right? I'm talking about living a life that is abundant in various aspects, not just money, but also a life that is rich in love, in joy, in laughter, in fun. So recently, Kevin and I have started bouldering, right? It is a new hobby of ours. I, it is something that I've always wanted to do in the past year. And I said that, you know, this year I feel like doing something more physically active. 
And I got into it. I got Kevin into it. And now he's more addicted than I am. And we are actually spending a lot of our times, even with our friends. You know, we got them onto the activity. And I love that there is an activity that I can actually, you know, do that allows me to get physically stronger. And at the same time, I'm having fun with my loved ones. And as I'm experiencing all this, I feel like, wow, I'm living a really good life. And not only that, on top of that, on my best friend's birthdays, I was able to, you know, take them on painting workshops or candle making workshops. I was able to spend quality time doing things that are special, that allows us to actually, you know, have good conversations and create great memories together. And one more thing that kind of really got me realizing about how much I have risen in the past years is that recently on our sixth anniversary, Kevin and I went back to the restaurant where we went on our first date. And I still remember this very clearly, which was when we went there for our first date. Back then, Kevin was still studying. He was still going through the exams for his professional paper to become a lawyer. And I remember back then, I didn't dare to order an expensive item off the menu because I know that we both were kind of like pretty poor at that moment. Like we were happy in our lives, but we were financially still just getting started. And this time around, when we went back there, I was really happy that we were able to just order the most expensive item on the menu without being too worried that like, oh, we won't be having enough for the rest of the month. And I think that is, to me, already a luxury. And that reminded me of how much we have grown in our financial journey. And that's the kind of rich life that I'm talking about. I'm not talking about crazy big amount of money overnight, I'm talking about being able to live a life that is so abundant where you are able to do things that you want, to spend time with your loved ones that is so rich in so many different areas of your life. And so let's talk about how we got here because I truly think that I have manifested this life. Yes, it is impossible to talk about living your rich life without talking about manifestation because I believe that that is truly how one can go from living a poor girl life into living a rich girl life. But I first want to start off by addressing this general misconception when it comes to manifestation. Yes, the law of attraction states that when you think positive thoughts, when you think about the things that you want in your life, you are able to attract it. But that doesn't mean that, you know, there is a genie in the lamb that is going to grant your wishes and overnight you are going to get exactly what you want. Law of attraction, manifestation, means that when you think about these things so much, you start to let go of things that no longer serves you and you start attracting the good stuff, right? By taking action towards it. Yes, manifestation also means that you still need to put in the work. You still need to take action to pave your way towards attracting the things that you want in your life. And if you ask me, based on my experience and understanding, Manifestation is about these two main things. Number one, acceptance and healing from your past. And number two, being intentional with the life that you want to lead. Because when you are able to do the above two, it means that you truly believe that you are deserving of the things that you want in life. And that's when you'll be able to start opening doors to make way for this abundance in your life. So let's first talk about acceptance and healing. When it comes to money, I feel like a lot of us who are not raised up rich, right? A lot of us who grow up pretty average, we come with some generational 
curse. The main money problems that we usually deal with, they actually come from our parents' generation. They come from our grandparents' generation because perhaps they were not so fortunate to be able to learn, to be educated, to have that financial literacy that can help them to get out of where they are. And when we, you know, when you and I, when we first started our financial journey, chances are we mirror what we observe when we grow up. We learn to do things the way that our parents or our grandparents did, and that may not be the right way of doing things. So there could be a lot of patterns that we take after them, which leads to mistake, which also means that chances are when you and I are first getting started with our financial journey, we are doing it all wrong, right? And that we could potentially feel like shit. You know, our life is just shit. Like we just don't know what we're doing and it can be very disheartening. And I want to start off by telling you that you have to accept that that is a part of your financial journey and you have to heal from it. Okay, just because this is something that you are born into, just because this is something that you did unknowingly and have cost you a lot of student debt or credit card debt, you can still unlearn and restart again. You can still accept that that is a part of your past and heal from it and grow from it. When it comes to making money, Oftentimes, we are always thinking about how much that we want to make. Like, I want to make seven figure. I want to live a life that allows me to fly private jet. I want to fly first class. I want to travel around the world. We often talk about all these big, hairy, audacious dreams, and that it's good to have big dreams. But sometimes, you also have to be intentional of how much money you actually want to make at this moment. Because let's be real, when the number is too big and when it is too vague and too far from the current reality of yours, it makes it feel like it's unattainable. I'm not saying that it's not, but sometimes your brain may, may register that it is not attainable at that moment because it's too far. The gap from where you are right now to where you want to be is so big that you cannot even imagine going through this path. So you got to be more intentional with how much money that you want to make. And this is something that I learned when I first started my money mindset journey um, back in 2018. I read it from the book called You Are a Badass in Making Money by Jensen Chero. And the question that you want to ask yourself is how much money do you want to make in the next three months? Okay, we're just going to look at the short term over here. How much money do you want to make? I'm going to give you a few moments to just think about it. You should have a figure that is in your mind. And I want you to think about that number. So I'm going to give you my example. Okay, so back then when I first read about this in 2018, I was still... Restarting my career journey after a mental health break, I was making a pretty decent junior salary, but it wasn't enough. And I wasn't familiar with the idea of making more money on top of my paycheck. Like I felt like it was not possible for me, but I was still learning anyway. So at that point, I just wanted to make an extra $1,500 in my bank. It's really simple. 1.5k. But in the book, Jensen Chero mentioned that whatever number that you have in your mind, I want you to multiply that by three. Okay, so for 1.5k, I multiplied it by three, so it's 4.5k. So I decided that I want to aim to make an extra 5k, an extra $5,000 in my bank within the next three months. So then I went on my journey to start taking up a side hustle to make more money. Back then I was working freelance to build websites for my clients. And the lucky thing was one of the clients that had me decided to have me on to manage all the incoming clients that they have. So I kind of have like a 
retainer income, like a recurring income um, to do freelance. And by the end of that three months, I was able to make $3,000 more. Okay, you see, back then, I had zero, right? I never knew that I could actually make extra money on top of my paycheck. But I pushed myself more than where I wanted to go. Instead of 1.5K, I aimed for 5K and I ended up making 3K. I actually made more than what I originally wanted. Even though I didn't hit that target, I got really close to it. And that was when I realized that, wow, when you are intentional with the amount of money that you want to make, you can actually make it. And when you set goals that are higher than what you initially wanted, you can actually push yourself to go further. This quote that I really love is to aim at the moon, even if you feel you fall among the stars, right? Always aim big, maybe not too big that you feel it's unattainable, but aim big enough so that you are able to challenge yourself to actually push yourself further than where you could have been. And when it comes to talking about being intentional with the life that you want to lead, I've also spoken before on this podcast when I talk about setting intention in, you know, in your life. It's that to build vision board. Vision board is something that is very easy to do and it is a very great exercise to help you to have a better idea of how to visualize your dream life. I can tell you, there are so many things in my vision board in the last two to three years that are already my current reality right now. And every time I look back into this board, it amazes me to feel like, hey, I'm already doing that. Hey, that's my reality right now. So I love creating vision board. For me personally, I don't really do magazine cuts or, you know, go through like the whole editing app to get a vision board done, I just go to Pinterest and search for the images that represents what I want to say or what I want to do or what I want to have and I add them into a Pinterest board which is really simple and easy to do. And then I also embed this vision board into my Notion dashboard which I open up almost every day on my computer and I also create widgets on my iPhone that allows me to display pictures from my vision board every day. So whenever I open up my iPhone, I would come across different images that are from my vision board. And it helps me to just remind myself of the life that I actually want to create. And so that I'm able to be more intentional with my day-to-day decisions as well. So yeah. Those are the two points that I want to talk about when it comes to manifesting your rich and abundant life, which is to accept and heal from your past so that you can make space to be more intentional with the life that you want to live. So I know what you're thinking, but Wendy, it is easier for you to talk about it now, to talk about abundance now that things are easier for you. I get it. It truly is easier for me right now, but I tried to put myself back into where I was before this, when I was still dealing with a very low paycheck and when I was still dealing with a credit card debt. And here are a few things that I felt has helped me to really get out of that space. These are the things that helped me to practice an abundance mindset even when my reality was still scarce. Number one, I meditated every morning. And when I talk about meditation, what I truly meant is I spend time every single morning to tune into my thoughts and to be self-aware about the things that I'm thinking and the feeling that I'm feeling. Every morning, I try my best. The first thing in the morning, I sit down for 10 to 20 minutes to just realign myself, to visit what are actually the thoughts that are in my head. Some days I am anxious. Some days I worry. Some days I'm scared. But even when I have these thoughts, I don't judge myself. I don't stop myself from having these thoughts. I just let myself experience them. 
and I accept them. And at the end of my meditation, I always remind myself that this is where I am right now. But look around this space. I am in a space where I feel safe, where I feel comfortable. I have a bed to sleep in and I wake up feeling grateful that I am still able to afford to put food on the table. I have a partner that loves me. I have a job that pays me. There are still money in my bank. I don't need to worry so much about it. Right? Meditation is a practice that allows me to be self-aware of my thought. And at the end of my meditation, after reminding myself to bring myself back to the present and to practice gratitude, I remind myself of the life that I intentionally want to live. I remind myself of the big purpose that I have in this life. I remind myself of my dream to be a full-time content creator that allows me to generate the income and that allows me to give me the freedom to do the things that I want, that allows me to creatively express myself so that I can share my thoughts with the world and make money while doing it. Every single morning, on days when I can meditate, I tune into my feelings, I tune into my thoughts, and then I reminded myself to be present, and then I remind myself of my dreams. I am really intentional in that way, and because of this practice, I've been meditating for two years now, okay? And for you, it might not have to be meditating. It could be journaling. It could be just praying to God when you are driving to work. It could be just talking to someone about your feelings and emotions and your thoughts. But I want you to have a practice that allows you to do it as often as possible on a daily basis if possible because there is going to be a lot of distraction in your life. So you need to have some sort of practice like that to help you to ground yourself back to the present so that you can focus on the big picture. And talking about the big picture, the second thing that I want to share with you is that the bigger the sacrifice, the bigger the reward. Okay, this is something that you are going to learn as you observe your own life, right? People talk about how scary it is to have kids, but the reason why so many people have kids and love their kids so much and because of their kids become better people, it's because the sacrifice is so big. Right at this stage of my life, I'm still not ready to have a kid. I still feel anxious about getting married. But I think that people still try to get married. People still try to have kids because the bigger the sacrifice, the bigger the reward. So if you want to achieve something that is so huge in your life, that is completely different from your current reality, you have to sacrifice big. Okay, you have to accept that. When your friends are spending money going to fancy restaurants or buying that more expensive phone or bag and you are still not able to afford it, it's okay. You just sacrifice your time now to you know, start that side hustle, to come home and work even harder after your day job, even when you are tired, to sacrifice going out with your friends so that you can learn more knowledge, upskill yourself so that you can make money and to improve your life. The bigger the sacrifice, the bigger the reward. So remind yourself of that so that it is easier for you to actually pull through it and to persevere in this journey. And I want to remind you Think about that photo of Jeffrey Bezos when he started Amazon from the garage. People are probably laughing at him. And I'm sure that there were a lot of internal debates that he had to go through. But look at where he is right now. I don't think he's the richest man in the world anymore, but he was at the top for for very long. And look at Dyson, right? James Dyson said that he created 5,217 prototypes of the vacuum to get to the right one. He failed 5,216 times. So it's, it's truly about the journey, right? It's really 
about being able to persevere through the failures, through the pain to get to where you want. It took me years of making bad investment decisions. It took me years of working side hustle and I'm still doing it right now. It took me putting money into business decisions that eventually didn't work out and getting into credit card debts and working hard to get out of it. To get to this point today where I actually feel like, wow, I'm living an abundant life. And I know that looking at the money in my bank account, I am still far from where I want to be. I still have to save up for a wedding. I still have to save up for a car. And there are so many more things that I want to do and I cannot afford it financially yet. But I don't look at them and tell myself that my life sucks. I actually currently look at my life right now and I think, wow, I'm living such a beautiful life. As I look around and feel the energy in the air around me, I can truly say that I've learned that abundance is truly a frequency and money is just a tool that allows me to rise up to the level of the life that I want to be at. I know this is a little bit spiritual in today's episode and it is out of my comfort zone to be talking about this. I hope I'm making sense with the things that I'm sharing. Um, but if you have any questions, you're always welcome to fill up the form and request for a topic or ask me a question. You can also message me on Instagram because I love engaging in conversation about these topics that I talk about in my podcast. And... I would like to end this episode by sending you lots and lots of love and good vibes and abundance your way. I will see you in my next episode. Goodbye. <laughs>